Praise God. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to all our GNWC Live Group families. Here we are again, uh, starting up our new video series on the study of the book of Genesis. I hope that uh, you enjoyed our last study on the book of Revelation. At this point in time, we're going to be looking at the book of Genesis. The first lesson that we're going to be looking into is uh, in Genesis chapter 4. It's the story of the first brothers, Cain and Abel or Abel. Now, I entitled this, uh, this video, Am I My Brother's Keeper? And so, am I my brother's keeper? So, again, facilitators, we're going to be having just a, a kind of a, a ground rules in a way where uh, I'm going to be doing about 10 minutes. Okay, about 10 minutes. Time flies so fast. So 10 minutes and then we're going to have a break. I'll probably, uh, again, over time, because again, 20 minutes. And I hope Pastor Petty and Pastor Mike will indulge with me on this, that uh, 20 minutes is basically too short. But anyway, let me try. So Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 to 26 is the story of the first brothers, the first two brothers, the, 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 the sons of Adam and Eve. Cain is the eldest and Abel is the, uh, the youngest. So here we will see uh, the, in the story that the, the Genesis chapter 4 is divided into three categories. Okay, The first one was a story of Cain and Abel. It was a short story, but it, it, it kind of brings us and gives us an idea of what happened on the first two brothers. And and the second one, the second category was the descendants of Cain. So it shows us the descendants of Cain up to the fifth generation. Okay. And then the last one, the last category was uh, the birth of Seth, which is the other son of Adam and Eve. So let's jump into it. I'm excited on this one and I hope you are too. Okay. So uh, the story of Cain and Abel or Abel in Genesis chapter 4 here we can see the contrast of Cain and Abel. It says there, if you read in Genesis chapter 4, it says there now Adam had sexual relations with his wife, of course, husband and wife. And Eve, and she became pregnant when she gave birth to Cain. She said, with the Lord's help, I have produced. And this is basically what the Lord told Adam and Eve. Uh, go and multiply, replenish the earth. Okay, And yet we know that this is after already uh, the fall of Adam and Eve. So they were already cursed. The ground was cursed, uh, Eve was cursed, Adam was, was basically, the ground was cursed for the sake of Adam. And so here we can see the, the dysfunctional family, the very first dysfunctional family. Uh, it was not on the original plan of God. The original plan of God, of course, is uh, to, to have a family that was created in the image of God to reproduce godly offspring. And yet this time we can see the contrast with Cain. And the seed, we all know that, that in the scripture, the Bible tells us that uh, one of the prophecies that God proclaimed to the serpent was, you know, the seed of the woman will basically uh, have a, a, a rivalry with the seed of the serpent. So evil, good and evil already kind of during the very first family, uh, basically the uh, the reality of good and evil is already there. And so here we notice that, yeah, uh, Eve produced or, or gave birth to a son named Cain. And then later she gave birth to his brother and named him Abel or Abel or Abel. When they grew up, it says here Abel became a shepherd while Cain cultivated the ground. So basically Abel became the shepherd and Cain became a farmer. So when it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops. And I want you to notice this, okay? So let me let me kind of pull out my, some of my notes here. So now, so we, we can see here the contrast of their personality, okay? Uh, you know, the personality and the occupation they have. Uh, Abel became a shepherd. Cain became a farmer. Now, when Cain's offering was brought to God, the Bible tells us that Cain's offering was rejected while Abel's or Abel's offering was accepted. Now, it was mentioned in verses 3 and 4 that Cain presented some of his crops, take note, some of his crops, 
as a gift of the Lord, but Abel also brought a gift and the best portions of the firstborn lambs from his flock. The Lord accepted Abel in his gift, but did not accept Cain in his gift. This made Cain very angry and he looked dejected. And of course, there was a conversation. Uh, God asked Cain, why are you so angry? The Lord asked Cain, why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you, but you must subdue and it be its master. Okay? So this is one of the stories that you can see here. So the possible reasons, these are just possible reasons why probably uh, uh, Cain's uh, offering was rejected. Of course, we all know that it was, you know, God has a prerogative to, to choose who to accept, what to accept, not, what not to accept. So there was no specific mention of the reason why Cain's uh, offering was, re was rejected. But we could just speculate. So, of course, the very first thing that we could probably see is it was basically the sovereign, the sovereignty of God. If God chooses to accept Abel's gift versus Cain, we cannot question that. It is basically the sovereignty of God. And then the second possible reason here is we all know that in the scripture from the Old Testament until before Jesus came, that when it comes to the offering, the offering that God is accepting, is the offering of an animal sacrifice. And we have seen that when Adam and Eve, remember Adam and Eve fell into sin and Adam, Adam and Eve tries to cover up themselves with leaves from the tree. What did God do? God killed the first animal. Take note, God killed the first animal and took the, uh, uh, the skin of the animal and used it to cover uh, Adam and Eve. And that became their clothes. So he can, we can see here already that in God's perspective, that when it comes to sacrifices, when it comes to offering, God accepts a blood sacrifice. And we all know that Cain brought some of his crops, okay? Some of his crops because that's his harvest. And, and who knows, maybe when Cain brought his sacrifices, it was probably not the first fruits or whatnot. But we know that from, from Abel's standpoint, he actually brought the very firstborn lambs from his flock. So lamb, what is the lamb? Lamb sacrifice. And, and the, here we can see the reason, the very reason, the very obvious reason why God accepted the Abel sacrifice because it, because it was a lamb, the firstborn lamb. And when we talk about the firstborn lamb, we're talking about, uh, the typology, or it signifies Jesus Christ, who is the very Lamb of God, the firstborn Lamb that was sacrificed for the sins of humanity. So the Lord accepted Abel, Abel's gift. The probably the third reason was the poor quality. Could be the quality that that uh, uh, Cain offered to God was probably some of his crops. Was it the first fruit? We don't know. But the only thing that we can see here from Abel's standpoint, he brought the best portions of the firstborn lambs from his flock. So the choices, okay? So he uh, uh, Abel offered a good quality sacrifice or offering, uh, but with Cain, it's not. And probably uh, another reason here that probably God rejected Cain's offering is because we can see here that that Cain already have an attitude, okay? So when, when God rejected Cain's offering, there was already a conversation and God asked uh, Cain, why are you so angry? The Lord asked Cain, why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. So God is already addressing the issue here with Cain. Sin is crouching at the door. But take note, God said to, to, uh, to basically to, uh, to Adam, I mean, Cain, Okay, uh, basically you have to make sure that in a way it says here, sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you, but you must subdue it and be its what? Master. Be its master. So it is important for us to understand, you know, that basically that the 
God was actually uh, talking to uh, to kind of to to Eve in a way uh, to to Cain that you can be accepted if you just what if you just offer something or if you check your attitude. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you, but you must subdue it and be its what be its master. So I'm almost there. Okay, now the attitude problem of Cain. On his life. All right, so sorry about that. Um, I think you bl I've lost uh, audio for a while. So here we go. I, I'm pretty sure you can hear me now. Okay, so I'm back. So anyway, uh, we're going to have a short break. So uh, PICs or facilitators, uh, we, I'm, I'm going to just, just kind of uh, pause the video for a moment. And you can probably have a bathroom break or water break or whatever break you want to have. And so, uh, yeah, so pause the video. And we will continue. Okay, I'm back. All right. So I hope you had a great break, and uh, we will continue on. And so I, I end up I, on the uh, the attitude, and it, it says there that uh, Cain basically settled in the land of Nod, which is which means uh, wandering. So imagine the curse that was brought upon uh, Cain because of his first, the very first murder that happened in the scripture, in the Bible, is the two brothers. That's why I entitled this, Am I My Brother's Keeper? Look at this. So imagine when God asked Cain, okay, is this after, afterward the Lord asked Cain? Okay, because we all know already that uh, when when Ad, when Cain was so angry, and then one day in verse eight it says Cain suggested to his brother, "Let's go out into the fields," and and you can see here basically the attitude and the plan. Uh, Cain was already plotting a murder in his heart. So and while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Think about that. Look at, look at the evil in the heart of people after, after chapter 3 in chapter 4. A lot of things happened already. And so it says here, afterward, the Lord asked Cain again. The second question that was asked to Cain, the very first question that was asked to Cain is, why are you so angry? Okay? Right? And then the next question that was asked is this. God asked Cain, where is your brother? And look at the reply of Cain, okay? Where is your brother? Where is Abel? Now, the thing is this. Remember the very first question that God asked Adam, where are you? Now, we all know already that God knows exactly where Adam was. It was not a geographical question. Uh, it is a question of what is the condition of your heart. So the same question, God already knew what happened to Abel. God already knew that Cain murdered his brother. But why is it that God was asking, where is your brother? Where is Abel? And then look at the reply of Cain. I don't know. Cain responded, am I my brother's guardian? Am I my brother's keeper? Look at the attitude of Cain responding to the question of God. You know, like look at verse 10. But the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Imagine God wanted Cain to confess. You know, the only thing that God is waiting for is for Cain to confess what he did. And yet, he replied differently. He replied, am I my brother's keeper? And then the Lord told him, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out for me, cries out to me from the ground. Now you are cursed. 
and banished from the ground, which has swallowed your brother's blood. The very first spilling of the blood on the ground that was cursed by God. And from here on, we already know that blood was spilled over and over and over again. And can you imagine that every time blood is being spilled over the ground, that those blood are crying out to God? How many murders happened already? How many unborn child is being murdered and their blood was crying before our God? Now look at verse 11. Now you are cursed and banished from the ground. No longer will the ground yield good crops for you, no matter how hard you work. Imagine. Remember, Cain was a farmer. So from now on, you will be a homeless wanderer on the earth. And then Cain replied to the Lord, my punishment is too great for me to bear. You have banished me from the land and from your presence. You have made me a homeless wanderer. Anyone who finds me will kill me. And then the Lord replied, no, for I will give a sevenfold punishment to anyone who kills you. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain to warn anyone who might try to kill him. So Cain left the Lord's presence and settled in the land of Nod, which is wandering, is of Eden. Now, the next category that we will look at is the descendants of Cain. Cain had sexual relations with his wife and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Enoch, the Cain founded a city. Then Cain founded a city, which he named Enoch after his son. Enoch had a son named Irad, or Irad, or Irad became the father of Mehujael. Mehujael became the father of Methusael. Methusael became the father of Lamech. So basically, Lamech is what? Is the fifth generation from Cain. And we all know what happened to Lamech. Lamech married two women. The first one was named Ada, and the second was Zila. And Ada gave birth to Jabal, who was the first of those who raised livestock and live in tents. And his brother's name was Jubal. The first of all who played the harp and flute. Lamech's other wife, Zila, gave birth to a son named Tubal Cain. He became an expert in foregoing, forging tools of bronze and iron. And then Tubal Cain uh, had a sister named Naama or Naama. One day, Lamech said to his wife, Ada and Zila, hear my voice. Listen to me, you who wives of Lamech. I have killed a man who attacked me, a young man who wounded me. Now, look at verse 24. If someone who kills Cain is punished seven times, then the one who kills me will be punished 77 times. So look at the, the generation upon generation here. And now, one thing I would like to address here today also is uh, imagine when, uh, when, when, look at the descendants of Cain on the fifth generation. We all know that it says here that Lamech or Lamech also became a murderer. And he, he basically proclaimed upon himself that if Cain's, if someone will kill Cain, that he will basically uh, kind of uh, uh, seven times, you know, uh, he will be punished seven times as the punishment of Cain. But for Lamech, he said 77 times. So imagine the gravity of all the things here, right? And so here we can see that the descendants of, of Cain uh, is very clearly that we can see here that the descendants upon descendants, generation upon generation, uh, the sin was spilling over and over and over. And, and people or men who was created in the image of God became more evil during that time. So think about it, brothers and sisters. And, and uh, so Enoch, you know, had a son named Irad. And yet at this point in time, we all know that Lamech, you know, became the fifth generation of Cain. And he was the one who also murdered someone. Now, now there is hope. There is hope. Don't don't be don't be kind of uh, uh, kind of be sad because the third category in the story of Genesis chapter four is the birth of Seth. And here we can see the hope. And Seth is actually, of course, probably we we, we don't know. There's I'm pretty sure there's so many other sons and daughters and 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 daughters of, of Adam and Eve. And yet this time it says Adam had sexual relations with his wife again and she gave birth to another son. She named him Seth. Now, one of the questions that we'll probably ask here, uh, if, if Adam and Eve only have Cain and Abel, where is the wife of Cain came from? 
Now, it was not written anymore in the scripture, but we all know that during the time that Adam and Eve probably also had sons and daughters and everything because they live, what, 930 years? I'm pretty sure they'll be having other sons and daughters there. It was not mentioned in the Bible, but uh, very obvious that uh, now, you, if, if you probably hear some stories like where probably there are other people other than Adam and Eve, you know, re reject that. That's not in the scripture. The only thing we know is that definitely Adam and Eve was the very first creation of God. And so from Adam and Eve, there was Cain and Abel. And then it was not even mentioned, but I'm pretty sure uh, probably uh, uh, during that time, most likely Adam and Eve still have other sons and daughters and you know, they probably have a lot of daughters and that's when Cain married because during that time on the early uh, uh, centuries of the period of humanity, it was allowed to marry brothers, sisters, you know, they because th they are the only people during the time. So what will you expect, right? So they married with each other and they have sons and daughters. But the hope is this. Look at this. It says, Adam had sexual relations with his wife and she gave birth to another son. She named him Seth. Seth is probably means granted, okay? Or the name also may be appointed. So God basically appointed another son to Adam and Eve. For she said, God has granted me another son in place of Abel or Abel whom Cain killed. Now, look at the hope in verse 26. When Seth grew up, he had a son and named him Enosh. At that time, I, I want to end on this statement in the last verse, verse 26 of, okay, uh, verse 26 of chapter 4. This is where our hope comes in. At that time, people first began to worship the Lord by name. So brothers and sisters, there is hope. When Seth was born, appointed by God, this is when what? When people started worshiping the Lord by name. So I hope we got something from this chapter. I know I'm over time already with a few minutes, but I just want to encourage you today that as you study Genesis chapter 4 from 1 to 26, I hope that through this we can learn something uh, from the life of Cain, from the life of Abel. And uh, am I my brother's keeper? Absolutely. We are to be our brother's and sister's keeper. We have to be a rear guard to one another. We are not to, uh, to murder anyone. And, and you know what Jesus said? By merely getting angry at someone without a cause, you are already committing murder in your heart. So how many of us became a murderer in reality? Sometimes we look at this when we think probably, oh, Cain is a murderer. Lamech is a murderer. But the reality is, we are all murderers in the sight of God. If you got angry at someone without a cause, then by Christ's standard, you and I already murdered someone in our heart. So I, for one, will not deny the fact that who knows? I probably have murdered a lot of people because if I became angry without a cause at someone, I probably did that even before I was, I became a Christian. Or sometimes, even as a Christian, we're probably still uh, kind of vulnerable to committing that. So brothers and sisters, are we brothers and sisters keeper? Absolutely. Let us be like Jesus, okay? He took all the penalty of sin to replace you and I so that we will not be punished anymore. And so we are our brothers and sisters keeper. All right. So God bless you. Let me just say a prayer before we close. All right. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that uh, my brothers and sisters will be able to study, uh, Lord, uh, the book of Genesis. And we all know that we will only take part of each chapters in Genesis. But I pray today that you will bless all the PICs and the facilitators as they study, as they discuss questions, Lord God, among themselves. I pray that you bless it and give us Lord, the attitude, O oh God, of worship before you. And Lord, may we continue to guard our hearts from any sin that crouches upon our door and let us subdue it. Because as you have said to Cain, we should master it. It should not be sin that is mastering us, but we are supposed to be the one mastering against any sin in our lives. So Lord, may you guard our hearts. Help us, Lord to always have a positive attitude 
especially in this life. We honor you and we bless you. Bless all our life groups right now as we give you the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, thank you so much. Thank you. I commend Pastor uh, Ferry, our life group pastor, and also Pastor Mike, and to all our uh, LG life group PICs and all our facilitators. Enjoy the discussion right now. God bless you. Bye for now. See you again in the next video. Bye.